Whenever you have a freshman quarterback, running back, wide receiver, whoever at any position, you want to see them go out there and succeed, but sometimes if they play too good, it can hurt them. I know what you're sitting there thinking, yo Matt, how can them playing really good hurt them? How is that a negative? If a freshman quarterback like Kayla Williams goes out there and plays phenomenal and at a Heisman level in his first two to three starts, that's the expectations and that's the standard. So what happens is the fans, media, me, you, everyone involved when we watch him play, we expect him to go out there and do that every single game. When in reality, that's not going to happen. Speaking of reality check, you know who needs one of those? Alabama football fans. And trust me, you're going to want to stick it out. I got something to say about them. Let's get back on top of it with Caleb. If you watched his first couple of games against Texas and the things he was pulling off against Kansas and that magical play, you're never going to see it again. It was good. It was awesome in the moment. He was getting the Heisman love. But when you come back down to earth, he's not going to do that all the time. And why now this has created such a big problem for Oklahoma and Oklahoma fans in general they have a false perception before we go any farther real quick you guys like the last time we double upload so if you want to see another double upload hit that like button let's get 500 likes in three hours i know you guys can do it if we do reach the like goal i got a very intriguing topic we're going to talk about tonight you're going to want to stay tuned also last but not least this video is sponsored by me I don't bore you guys and throw you BS sponsorships and waste your time. The only thing I'm going to ask is for you right now, go down there, hit that subscribe button. A bunch of you watching, you like the football videos, but you haven't subscribed. Go down there, do me a favor. It helps me out and helps the channel out tremendously. I know you guys are ready to get into this video. Trust me, I am too. But I want to say, I really appreciate all the support and love you've shown on the videos. It doesn't go unnoticed. And I know a lot of YouTubers say it. I mean this 100%. It means so much to me. You don't understand what your support means to me. Thank you. That's all I want to say. Let's continue on. Hope you guys enjoy. I would say Oklahoma has a diehard fan base, maybe one of the most passionate ones in all of college football outside of the SEC. With that being said, I would also say some of their fans have no idea what they're talking about. Let's take a look at this tweet. Quote unquote, this will be a very unpopular tweet. How much time does Kayla Williams need to throw the ball? Outside of a 75-yard run, what did he do today? If Spencer had that time, he would kill a defense. Spencer Williams as a passer. Well, my friend, I got a question for you. Did you watch the games earlier this season when Spencer was playing? He had plenty of time to pass the ball, and he showed he couldn't do it as good as Caleb. The debate's over. It's not even a quarterback controversy. It's Caleb Williams' team. I'm not going to ridicule Spencer. You know how it is. He can't stay in the pocket. He's indecisive and makes costly interceptions and decisions. The problem yesterday in their 28-21 sloppy victory wasn't Kayla Williams. I'll stand on that. It's the offensive coordinator and the coaching. I spoke on this a little in last night's video on Saturday nights. You know how I like to recap all the big games in college football. I didn't go in depth like I wanted to. I watched all the Oklahoma game and I was getting pissed off more than Oklahoma fans. Here's why. How come you have one of the best running backs in the country, Kennedy Brooks, you have a great backup in Eric Gray, they run the ball for 5 to 10 yards a carry, and you continue to pass? They could have ran on every play yesterday, and they would have been successful. Kennedy Brooks only had 17 carries, but was well over 100 yards. He averaged 7 yards a carry. What Oklahoma did, for example, on first down, they'd run the ball, get 6 to 7 yards, it'd be second and short, and they pass. Why would you pass? I would not pass the ball until Iowa State showed me they can stop the run. I get it, I get it. That's Oklahoma's offense, that's Lincoln Riley. He wants to air the ball out, but why would you fix what's not broke? I think a great comparison for Oklahoma right now is the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are struggling this year because the NFL defenses knew what they wanted to do. They wanted to take the top off of the defense on every single play. So what did the NFL do? Every team that played them put two safeties back, and they made them beat them by throwing short passes. And guess what? Kansas City couldn't do it. They wanted to throw the deep ball. Therefore, they were throwing interceptions, fumbling, and losing the games. Lincoln Riley is extremely similar to Kansas City. He doesn't want to have a monotonous drive where he's getting 5 to 10 yards of play. He wants to get it all in 1 to 2 plays. I honestly believe if Oklahoma would install some bubble screens, some short passes, run the ball more, they would be way better. 
If you didn't watch this game, you see that Kayla Williams was 8 for 18, had 87 yards, one touchdown, one interception. You would think he played terrible. I disagree. He had one big run for 75 yards in the first quarter. His numbers are deceiving. He played okay. I wouldn't say good, but he played okay. He had another questionable interception, but when you play Caleb, that's what's going to happen. He's going to make some good plays and some bad ones. Back on topic with the tweet, you got that guy criticizing Kayla Williams, saying that Spencer could do better. But in reality, Spencer's been playing good. Oklahoma fans need to come down to reality. It's almost like Alabama fans. You know how Alabama's winning right now and the fan base is mad about it because they're not blowing out teams? It's a similar situation. And all of Alabama's close wins against LSU, Arkansas, Florida, and there was one or two more, the fans are saying, hey, we're playing like this, this is terrible, we gotta get it fixed. Alabama fans are so brainwashed, they don't understand that what they've done the past 8 to 9, 10 years, it's not normal. It's not normal for a team to be that dominant over even a 4 year span, rather alone a 10 year span. Alabama fans need to come back down to earth and realize anytime you win a game in the SEC, it's good and you should celebrate it. It's not always there's a problem when you only win by 7. I couldn't even imagine if Alabama was doing what Clemson did at the beginning of this year, they would have asked to fire Nick Saban, and I believe that. What happens is when you win so much, people start to lose respect for winning, and I hate to see that. If you're an Alabama fan and you're criticizing your team after only winning by seven points, just go root for somebody else. If you're not satisfied with, what, five to six championships in 11 and 12 years, feel free to go root for Florida or Clemson. Nothing pisses me off more than when these Alabama kids go out there, play their best, win a hard-fought SEC game, and you got your own fans saying, oh, we gotta fix this, we gotta fix that. Dude, you're 10 and one and you're ranked second in the country. You're a great ball team. That's all I gotta say to Alabama fans. Come back down to earth. You got to realize and come to terms with Nick Saban's not going to be there forever. And when he leaves, oh man, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Think about it. Their fans right now are crying because they're only winning by seven points and they're still winning. Imagine what's going to happen when Saban leaves. And before somebody says, yo, but that's the standard, I get it 100%, that's the standard they expect to win. But don't criticize and say they're a bad team because they're only winning by seven. Getting back on topic with Mr. Kayla Williams, let's take a look at something I think is important. In his first game or first half against Texas, he had 200 yards, two touchdowns, and a couple of rushing touchdowns. Or no, my bad, one rushing touchdown. He looked as great as you could, and the next game against TCU, he was terrific, was 18 for 23, had 300 yards, and four touchdowns. The game after that against Kansas, he was good again, had a buck 80, two touchdowns, one interception, 94 QBR, and was good on the ground. And then against Texas Tech, he was Superman Caleb Williams. He had 400 yards with six touchdowns, zero interceptions. Those numbers I just read off were in his first four games. That's why he was getting Heisman love. He was playing like a Heisman quarterback. I even went on the record to say if he continued to play like that, he should more than likely be a Heisman frontrunner. But then you had the big bad Baylor Bears come in and squander that. In that game, he was 9 for 18, 50%, a buck 40, zero touchdowns, two interceptions. That was a glimpse and we got to see that he is human and he is a freshman. He looked like one. I don't want to discredit Baylor. Their defense had a perfect game plan. To follow that up in their most recent game Saturday, which was yesterday, he proved he was a freshman and he's human again. 8 for 18, 90. We already went over it. One touchdown, one interception. That right there, what's happened in those past two weeks, is a reality check and it's a humbling experience for him that he needed in the Oklahoma fan base. I do believe some of the fans are coming to terms with okay he's not gonna be this heroic freshman every game and i think they get it but for the most part i think a lot of people don't depending what happens in the rest of the games this year we'll set the expectation bar for next year just the way the fan base is i believe oklahoma fans are going to say he's a heisman front runner and they're going to expect him to be terrific and expect him to do what spencer rattler was supposed to do this year once again we got to go back to the key word of this video reality the reality is he's not going to be terrific every game and he needs help from his offensive coordinator, coaching staff, and running backs and wide receivers. Is he a great player? Is he going to win them some games? Is he going to have Heisman moments? Yes, but he's also going to have some bad games. Right now, I would say Kayla Williams is a good quarterback. I wouldn't call him great. He was great in the first four weeks, not anymore. The Oklahoma quarterback situation will always be one of the most intriguing subjects of college football. Let me know what you think about it down below, but 
But that being said, it's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. If you know the channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. I'm not asking again. Go down there, hit it. Hit that like button, do all that nice stuff. And as always, let's be great. I'm out, y'all. Peace.